Aloha, everybody, and welcome back to part two of Sonic Forces. We are now moving on to the third stage of the game, and I'm getting all the pop-ups for my DLC. Yes, I know I can dress up the avatar. I know I have all this DLC. Thanks for the reminder. <laughs> but anywho, folks, we can play as Sonic, we can play as the rookie slash avatar, but Sonic Forces actually has a third playable character, and we're going to be introduced to that character right now. Should have done it. I couldn't figure it out for you, buddy. I'm sorry I wasn't smart enough. Huh? Whoa, chaos! Sonic, help me! dimension, aren't you? Right, 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 that makes sense, I think. Do you know how you got here? Maybe the power that Eggman is using is somehow affecting other dimensions. Which might work to our advantage. I mean, everything happens for a reason, right? We need to save the world, and maybe that's why you're here, to help save the world. Either way, it's still good to see you, Sonic. Heck, it's good to see any Sonic. So in case it wasn't obvious before, Sonic Forces is definitely aiming for the Sonic Generations crowd because not only can we play as 3D boost-happy Sonic, we can also play as old-school 2D classic Sonic. And he plays exactly like he did in Generations. He jumps, he has the spin dash, but since he's coming off of his adventures from Sonic Mania, as you probably noticed with the musical cue during the cutscene, uh, he also has access to the drop dash. So when you push the jump button in the air and hold it down, Sonic will immediately propel forward when he lands on the ground, and I do love the drop dash, so I am happy with this inclusion. But uh, something that kind of sucks about Classic Sonic is that his momentum is really screwy and weird. And if I'm going to be honest, he does not play anywhere near as good as he did in Sonic Generations, and it is very, very odd. One thing you're going to notice throughout this stage a lot, whenever you reach like an incline, like he's going up a hill, watch this. You see that spring? You see how that spring materialized out of nowhere to propel him upwards? Which, first off, I hate invisible springs. I don't know why those are back from Sonic Lost World. But... I have a feeling the reason those springs are there is because Sonic's momentum is so bad that sometimes when he goes up an incline, he just loses speed and he can't launch anywhere, and so they put those as a way to mitigate that problem, since they probably had no time to fix it. I don't know, I wasn't there, I didn't work on the game, but that's my theory. <laughs> the momentum of Sonic is so weird uh, in this particular game because, first off, Sonic is really heavy. Anytime I am making a jump in Sonic Forces, I am holding the jump button for the entire time. Like, I'm holding the jump button down, I'm not just tapping it. Normally I'd be tapping it. Normally I'd just be like, tap, 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 in order for some quick, light platforming, like I could do with any other Sonic game. But with this game in particular, I feel the need to hold the jump button a lot, because that's the only way I can hang in the air long enough to get to where I need to go. I was having so much trouble doing the platforming when I first played this game, and it is nowhere near as responsive or as tight as Sonic Generations was. And, um, it's a problem that plagues the entire game. It's a problem that makes Classic Sonic probably the least favorite character to play in this whole entire thing. And, uh, when we see how much he's involved with the plot and whatever, it really feels like Classic Sonic is just in this game because, oh, he was in Generations! And we want to bring back that Generations magic. Oh look, there's a classic Eggman sign, just like Generations! That's how you know you're at the end of a stage! Ha ha ha! So, uh, yeah, classic Sonic is in Sonic Forces, and, um... It's a shame what they did to him. It's a shame what they did to him. <laughs> I'm sorry, but, uh... Ladies and gentlemen, now we're getting to the unlockable portion of the game. So, I beat stage 3, and I got a whole bunch of avatar clothing for the rookie. I also got an S rank, which means I get even more. Oh wait, no, they don't do that yet. For some reason, it didn't trigger at first. Ah, whatever. Way to make me a liar, game!
I can taste your terror, child. All that anxiety and doubt. It's delicious. Give in to your fear. Fully screaming, and I'll let you live. <laughs> Oh boy, he's so scary. Knuckles, can you hear me? Rouge, it's about time. How's Sonic doing? He's been better. They're getting ready to banish him into space. What? You can't be serious! Eggman's been keeping Sonic alive all this time. He's been waiting to show him his completed empire before banishing him. Torturing Sonic just to pass the time? Oh, that's low, even for Eggman. Eggman got wind of our rescue plan, and is moving forward with his plan ahead of schedule. The clock is ticking, boss. But we don't even know where he's being held captive! Yes, we do. Eggman rebuilt the Death Egg. That's where he's keeping Sonic. The Death Egg? Oh, man! That's not good! None of this is good, Vector. That's why it's called war. <laughs> Oh, come on, this game. This game is too much. You all know what to do. Let's go get Sonic. Yeah, let's go get Sonic. Let's go get Sonic. So yeah, the Death Egg's in this game too. <laughs> but before we move on to the next stage, which the Avatar is going to play, I'm going to go into the Avatar menu as well as the Mission menu. Uh, the Mission menu shows you a whole bunch of objectives you can complete, and when you complete those objectives, you'll actually get more clothing pieces for the Avatar. So, clear stage 3 with an S rank. I did that. Why didn't you give me it? I just did it. You liars. I did 1 and 2 as well. I don't know why the missions don't kick in until after stage 3 is over. Whatever. <laughs> but, here we can change our wispins, wispons, however you pronounce it. Uh, and here is where we can dress up the avatar with a whole bunch of clothing options that we unlock throughout the game. As well as DLC that you can buy or get with a pre-order bonus like I did. So I can dress uh, Clement the Great as Shadow the Hedgehog if I so desire. I can give him glasses. I can give him Beats sunglasses from Jet Set Radio. And that mask is Joker's mask from Persona 5. There is a Persona 5 costume where you can dress your avatar as Joker, the main character. And uh, that's bizarre. <laughs> Also, those those hands are I eyes hands from Super Monkey Ball. You don't just have like weird flesh hands that's supposed to be like a Sonic character. That's supposed to be the monkey from Super Monkey Ball. So uh, yeah. <laughs> Either way, folks, we're going into the Death Egg. We need to save Sonic the Hedgehog, and so I figured. Well, guess what? That's kind of like infiltrating a palace. And when I think about infiltrating a palace. I think about putting... Oh, also, Sonic shirt. Yeah. The memes are strong with the Sonic franchise nowadays, and there is DLC where you can put on a Sonic shirt. In case you're feeling really wacky. I mean, you could dress your characters up as goofy, silly characters if you want, but... The Death Egg is a palace. Sonic is its treasure. I feel like I need to dress up like Joker for this particular mission. So, uh, I'm gonna dress up as Joker for my Death Egg infiltration, yeah. <laughs> and I just accomplished one of the daily bonuses, because I changed my outfit. And that makes the multiplier better, so it makes S ranks easier to get. Not that it matters, I could get the S rank regardless, but still. You didn't see this coming, did you? Listen up, rookie. Our other forces are busy dealing with enemies. It looks like you took the best route. It's up to you to save Sonic now. Find him! So at the beginning of the stage, every time I'm hanging a corner with the wire, uh, I can actually move the character, and I'm trying to move them right to where uh, the booster ramps are so that I can go to the higher platforms so I can get the red rings. Like I said before, collecting all the red rings will unlock extra stages, and that will get you extra clothing pieces for the avatar as well. And I'm going to try and get all that I can throughout the playthrough, but uh, yeah... Again, the music's incredible with the rookie stages, and uh, I like these stages a lot better than uh, classic Sonics, that's for sure. 
You know, that character that comes from another dimension? What, why are you phrasing it like that? Just say he comes from the past, like you did in Generations, because it's the same character from Generations. They even make a callback to Generations when Sonic meets up with Sonic. Ugh, just the terminology. Why are they suddenly deciding to call him from another dimension? Don't justify it. It's bad scripting. You know it is. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> This is not a different classic Sonic from the one that was in Generations. That was a time travel game, I, whatever. <laughs> but uh, either way, I like in the background, you see that red orb on the tower there? That is the red eye, that's the mini boss from the Death Egg Zone in Sonic 3 and Knuckles, uh, with the, the metal orbs and the spike platforms and the laser, you know. I love this bit right here, this bit where you have to react super quickly and follow where the rings are in order to walk along the pathway and dodge the laser enemies. That's so good, and nothing is like that in the modern Sonic stages. I'm just gonna say it, the Avatar has the best stages in the game. The Rookie has the best stages in the game and easily is the highlight of Sonic Forces for me. Whereas modern Sonic and classic Sonic, mm, not so much. But good, I could be a football player, I got fingerless gloves, black and pink sneakers, oh, green latex bodysuit, that's awesome. Now I got S rank bonuses. A Wispin, a purple cape, uh, Jester shoes, spider web shirt. Aw, yeah. Aw, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm going to be unlocking a lot of stuff in this game for the Avatar to wear, but uh, stage five versus Zavok. This is the end, Sonic. Oh, hey, sounds like the party started. Want to let me go and join in? No? Of course not. You hate fun. Whoa. Oh, wow. The end, huh? Let's see you try something now that I'm free. Foolish hedgehog. Getting out of your chains does not make you free. Now, come and face the inevitable. Ha! The only thing inevitable here is my foot kicking your butt. <laughs> Alright, so we're taking on Zavok, the main villain of Sonic Lost World, the last Sonic Team developed Sonic game, who, last I checked, really hated Eggman's guts. I can't wait to see how long you last against this. Come out and fight me yourself, and I'll mop you up real quick. Impudent runt! I'm going to save her watching you suffer. Where's Zaz? Where's Zor? Where's Zik? Where's Xena? You know, the other deadly Zeddy. <laughs> Either way, I wonder what's up with Zavok. I guess we'll find out later, but uh, this fight's kind of interesting because, you know, it's a 3D boost formula Sonic game and we're not running after something. We're not chasing after something. We actually have some small arena to platform and homing attack things in. And uh, it's not the best thing in the world, but, you know, I... I actually prefer it for not having the runner formula. I actually applaud it for having some kind of tight control during this. So, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't hate this boss fight. I don't really hate this boss fight. But uh, every now and then, Zavok is going to be trying to ground pound you or just dive into you with his weird buzz bomber machine. Why doesn't he have his dragon robot mech? Where's that? But, uh... He's using this Hornet machine, you know, and he tries to ground pound, and you always want to be outside of the shadow when it happens, so that Sonic... And you also want to be standing on the ground, by the way. If you try jumping as soon as he goes down, uh, then Sonic won't be propelled high, and you can't homing attack Zavok after the fact. So you don't want to jump over that particular area of effect attack. And you want to dodge him when you're homing attacking the other Buzz Bombers, and you don't want to fall off the edge, and it's very easy... Uh, you see me going left and right, left and right, whenever, or up sometimes, uh, whenever he's hanging above me with his shadow. Because I don't want to go too close to the edge, you know? No! How could I lose to the likes of you again? That was a blast! Bring some chili dogs next time! Look at all the prisoners in the background cheering me on. <laughs> yes, I know, I know. I'm awesome, I'm great. And Zavok still sucks. <laughs> Zavok is still lame. <laughs> but yeah, folks, we get a whole bunch of bonuses, including a new weapon, a new Wispon, uh, a Jewish yarmulke, 
spring shoes, uh, skull and crossbones bodysuit. It's not a t-shirt, it's like a whole bodysuit. And uh, nice backpack, fingerless gloves, nice 80 style boots, dragon bodysuit, like dragon scales. And uh, I get more uh, unlockables for uh, beating this boss fight under a certain time limit, because that was actually a mission requirement. So, uh, yeah. <sighs> It's that sound again. Whoa, it's not time for thinking. It's time for running. No comment on why Zabok just disappeared into thin air. Why did that happen? Sonic, you should probably comment on that. That's very odd. That doesn't normally happen. People don't just disappear when they die. This isn't Star Wars, even though you're in a Death Star type thing. But whatever. <laughs> But yeah, folks, Sonic is free. We'll be joining him again later in part three. But uh, once again, I want to showcase the Rookie's theme songs because the Prison Break stage, Prison Hall, has a fantastic vocal track. And uh, I, I just like the Rookie stages. I like the music and everything. What can I say? <laughs> See you in part three. No way.